Good afternoon. Thank you for coming and thank you for the opportunity to present here. I'm Melissa Wittens, a doctoral student from the University of Antwerp, and I'm excited to share with you this ongoing research regarding automated MRI volumetry on real world data. I have nothing to disclose, but this research was done in collaboration with Icometrics. I would like to start with some background information on how Alzheimer's disease is diagnosed in the clinic. During an initial visit in the clinic, a number of tests are performed to establish the most accurate diagnosis. These include blood tests to check for deficiencies or abnormalities, a neuropsychological assessment to evaluate different cognitive domains, an MRI scan to visualize brain atrophy or to identify other causes of memory loss, such as a stroke or a brain tumor, and if need be, additional PET imaging or a lumbar puncture to examine amyloid beta or tau levels. The figure on the left elegantly depicts on how these outcomes can be correlated to a disease stage in the Alzheimer's continuum. Clinical disease stages can, for example, be categorized in preclinical AD, which indicates that there are no signs of clinical symptoms yet. However, changes can occur in the brain years before the clinical onset of the disease. Then prodromal AD, also known as mild cognitive impairment due to AD, which is a clinical entity in which cognitive deficits do not fulfill dementia yet. This stage can be subdivided into amnestic, so with memory deficits, or non-amnestic, affecting a single or multiple cognitive domains. And finally, different degrees after entering the dementia stage. Something to keep in mind here is that it is not as clear cut. Alzheimer's affects people differently. Each individual may experience symptoms or progress through the stages in different ways. Also, due to its heterogeneous nature, signs and symptoms may not be characteristic for the disease and may instead reflect atypical presentations, making differential diagnosis a challenge. Going deeper into imaging, so what exactly happens in the brain due to AD? Left, you see a T1 MRI image coronal view of a healthy control with the hippocampus encircled in red and the green arrow pointing at the temporal cortex, both showing no atrophy. The patient in the middle, diagnosed with amnestic mild cognitive impairment, shows hippocampal atrophy, which is even more outspoken in the last patient diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease, showing significant temporal and hippocampal atrophy. During clinical routine, this and other findings are described by radiologists in a radiological report. To provide optimal information to the referring clinician, a radiological report should include the degree of medial temporal lobe atrophy, or MTA, the white of the sulci and the ventricles, white matter changes, and the occurrence of infarctions or other changes leading to secondary dementia. However, manual correction takes time. It still remains a subjective assessment, which requires significant expertise from clinicians and with the increasing quantity and complexity of the images. More images are required than there are people who can analyze them. So there is a need for automated processes. So adding numbers to a radiological reading. Ideally, the input of these automated processes would be high quality MRI, such as 3D acquisitions, that are compatible with state-of-the-art brain volume quantification solutions, resulting in reliable quantification as an output. The automated volumetric tool IcoBrainDM has FDA-cleared measurements for whole brain, gray matter, white matter, hippocampus, deep gray matter, cortical gray matter, frontal, parietal, and temporal cortex, and white matter hyperintensities from flare images. Findings are represented in a clinical report where the frontal cortex, depicted in green, the parietal cortex, depicted in blue, the temporal cortex, depicted in red, and hippocampal volumes shown in orange, are described. In addition, there is an objective assessment on if these volumes are considered normal compared to a healthy person of the same age. This is described as a percentual amount of people from a healthy population having a similar brain substructure volume and age of a, as our individual patient. The black cross depicted on the four population graphs 
on the left represents the, where the calculated volume of the individual patient is. So for example, our individual patient that has a frontal cortex volume that falls into the green area uh, of the population graphs, indicating that in this case, 50% of the healthy population with the same age has the same brain substructure volume. Furthermore, on the right, a volumetric signature of four brain substructures together is given, which as shown in this video here, can differ depending on the neurodegenerative disease. To validate IcoBrain DM in terms of accuracy, reproducibility, and diagnostic performance, and compare this to other automated tools such as FreeServer, a study was performed with four nicely created research data sets. In this study, T1-weighted images were utilized as input and brain segmentation and volumes as output. When looking at the results, we could see that there was a slight undersegmentation for whole brain, gray matter, and the cortical lobes from both tools. That free surface default hippocampus segmentation overestimated most of the volumes, while free surface hippocampal subfield functionality underestimated most of them. Overall, we saw that IcoBrain DM has a lower bias, a lower absolute error, as well as fewer outliers. When we took a closer look at the accuracy of the hippocampal segmentations, we saw that there was a significantly lower median absolute volume difference of IcoBrain DM compared to FreeServer, and a significantly higher dye similarity coefficient for IcoBrain DM compared with FreeServer methods. In terms of reproducibility, we see from this figure, showing the absolute volume differences between test and retest scans, that the segmentations obtained by IcoBrain DM systematically tended to have lower volume differences than FreeServer, except for the parietal cortex, with significant differences for whole brain, gray matter, and hippocampal volumes. The p-values here were calculated with Wilkinson signed rank tests. Lastly, looking at diagnostic performance, all measures showed high area under the curve for AUC levels when distinguishing cognitively healthy controls from AD patients. The temporal cortex measured by IcoBrain DM produced an AUC that was significantly higher than the temporal lobe AUC produced by FreeServer. The long tests here were used to test whether AUC levels differed significantly between IcoBrain DM and FreeServer. However, these results can differ in a cl real world clinical setting. First of all, real world data contains different T1 qualities. In real life, patients don't go to the best scanners. Even though automated tools like IcoBrain DM are increasingly used in clinical practice, their use needs to be validated as well. A large proportion of 2D magnetic uh, resonant images are discarded uh, in research and in clinical practice um, as being incompatible with newer and better volumetric acquisitions. Therefore, we assess the reliability of brain volumes obtained from low-resolution MRIs with IcoBrain DM. Clinical data from eight different memory clinics was collected, including 88 healthy controls, 101 subjective cognitive decline subjects, 374 MCIs, and 311 ADs. Patient classification was effectuated in compliance with the NIAAA criteria for MCI due to AD and dementia due to AD. Controls were not cognitively impaired. Here are some demographics on the Remember dataset, including gender, age at baseline, MMSE at baseline, time between baseline and conversion, and years of education per diagnostic category. All patients underwent MR examinations, consisting of a T1-weighted MR image and a flare image. Automated volumetry was calculated for whole brain, gray matter, white matter, temporal, parietal, occipital and frontal cortex, hippocampus and lateral ventricles. Brain volume scaled for head size were adjusted to account for age and sex by using IcoBrain's healthy reference population. The healthy population volumes are obtained from MR images of 1,903 healthy subjects, available from several public collections on which the IcoBrain DM software was applied. For each brain structure, the age and sex matched median volumes computed using IcoBrain's DM's healthy reference population. Um, they were subtracted from the patient's volume in order to obtain age and sex adjusted volumes. 
with the aim of assessing the impact of slice thickness resolution in the classification of AD stages, subjects were split into three groups according to T1 image resolution. High resolution, which contains images with a slice thickness of less than one millimeter. Middle resolution images with slice thicknesses between one and 1.6 millimeters. And low resolution images with a slice thickness above 1.6 millimeters. The healthy controls and subjective cognitive decline subjects were taken together as a diagnostic group due to the low number of low resolution images available. We performed all pairwise comparisons between AD stages using a linear kernel support vector machine model or an SVM model. We used F SVM over the high resolution group, which was the training set, and tested its performance over the middle and the low resolution groups, referred to as the testing sets. The model input consisted of whole brain, gray matter, hippocampus left, hippocampus right, cortical gray matter, frontal, parietal, temporal, and occipital cortex. The SVM is fitted using balanced AD stages data obtained through minority class upsampling. The training set classification performance obtained in a five-fold cross-validation fashion is also reported as a reference performance. For evaluating the classifier's performance, a receiver operating characteristic or an ROC curve analysis is conducted, where the area under the ROC curve, so the AUC, is used as a general performance metric. For estimating the AUC distribution, a 50 repetition bootstrap resampling procedure was performed over the training set, so the high slice thickness resolution group, and the fitted models were evaluated over the two testing sets, the middle and the low uh, slice thickness resolution groups. The mean and the 95% AUC confidence intervals are provided in the table on the right. Sensitivity in red and specificity in class are reported in the graphs on the left. So what we see is a drop in sensitivity in the low resolution group compared to the middle and the high resolution group for all pairwise comparisons. However, it needs to be taken into account that the um, a uh, low resolution group from the healthy control and subjective cognitive decline only contained nine cases. So when we look at the middle graph, so the MCI versus AD, we also see a drop in performance, but visibly less severe. So to conclude, brain volumes computed with IcoBrainDM hold predictable um, capabilities for differentiating AD stages. By analyzing MR images of variable quantity, quality from a real world clinical setting, we saw the diagnostic performance degraded slightly for T1 images with a slice thickness above IcoBrain's recommended maximum value of 1.6 millimeters. But incidentally, this data set corresponded to a very small group of healthy controls. These findings suggest that IcoBrain DM can have additional diagnostic value in routine clinical practice. In addition to this, we also saw that with a slice thickness of approximately one millimeters and even extended to 1.6, good results are obtained. In other words, for automated MRI volumetry tools, based on our results, one can argue that the slice thickness can be extended, but should preferably not be above 1.6 millimeters. Lastly, I would like to emphasize that a significant part of this real world data set contained images with a slice thickness of above 1.6 millimeters. So we see that a fair amount of MR images still fall in this category, complicating the analysis of smaller structures like the hippocampus. Nevertheless, these images might still be useful when looking at more robust volumes like whole brain or lateral ventricles. Thank you for listening. If there are any questions, please don't hesitate to ask.